All right, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's take a look at example 3.6 here. So in example 3.6, we are asked to use a Taylor series expansion to estimate the sine of x, where x is um, the angle of interest in radians. Uh, so specifically, we're asked to use our Taylor series expansion to estimate sine of pi. Um, and we want to investigate how many terms are required uh, to converge our series. Okay. And then we'll compare our um, answer using a Taylor series expansion to the use of MATLAB's built-in function um, sine. Okay. Hey, so let's do it. So if I go over to MATLAB, uh, I tried to zoom in on the text uh, so I have it down here so I can uh, see what the equation is. Okay. But I'm going to create a new script. Okay. Uh, and as I type things up, so I've tried to minimize or reduce the size of my um, workspace. Um, that way I have a place here uh, in which I can place my plot without overlapping um, my command window slash workspace uh, to make sure I can see everything. And so in doing so, right, my editors could be rather small, uh, but if you'd like, if you click on this arrow here, right, you can maximize your editor so that as you type you can you know, use full screen. And then if you want to shrink it down, you can just click on this middle button here, Restore Editor, um, or the same thing would be available from the drop-down, right? So I can easily go back and forth uh, via there. Okay. So to start, okay, so this will be a uh, script to compute the sine of x using a Taylor series expansion. In terms of preconditions, we'll have x, angle of interest in radians, and we'll end the number of terms to use. Okay. As far as post conditions are concerned, post conditions, um, let's have a Taylor, uh, let's call it Taylor sum which will be our um, estimate from Taylor expansion. And then we could also do, say, a sin ref, and that'll be um, reference value using MATLAB built-in function. Okay, cool. All right, so, uh, let's do it. Okay, so as I think about this, okay, first thing is here I'm going to have a summation. Okay, so I'm going to have a summation, um, and this Taylor sum here, all right, is going to be my accumulator variable, all right, that's going to be my estimate of uh, sine of x. And since I have a summation, I'm going to take my accumulator and I'm going to initialize it with a value of zero. Okay. I initialize with the value of zero because anything plus zero is that anything. Um, so the first time through, um, I'll make sure that it's uh, you know assigned the correct value. All right, and so then from there, okay, I want to compute a summation from i equals zero to infinity. Okay, and so that screams a for loop. Okay, but I'm not going to go from i equals zero to infinity. I'm going to truncate my series after some number of terms n. Okay. So, so we're going to loop from 0 to n. So do 4i is equal to 0 colon um, n. Okay. And then the question is, uh, how, what do I need to do? What am I going to do each term? Okay. Uh, so if I look, uh, first things first, the thing that will be hardest to calculate will be this um, you know, factorial, so I want to keep that into mind, okay? And right now I have it set it up to start with i equals zero, okay? Uh, so, you know, what exactly would all this be? Okay, so my term, my first term, this, you know, zero here, right? So this would just be um, one, that's not an issue. Um, here, I would have, you know, one factorial, which is just one. Here, I would have, you know, x to the power of one, which would just be that you know, x, all right? So, you know, your first uh, order estimate would just be uh, sine of x is equal to 
um, x. Okay, so if I wanted to, uh, I could start this Taylor sum at uh, a value x, and that would help me avoid some issues. Um, or, you know, if I um, uh, want to, all right, I could just as well keep it uh, at zero and get started from there. So, anyways, so if I start with i equals zero to keep it simple. Um, the first thing I'll see that I'll need to calculate as part of my calculation is this factorial. Okay, and so we've already done this before, um, but um, let's go ahead and write a uh, for loop within our code, right? A for loop to calculate uh, the factorial. Okay. All right, so uh, let's do it. So I don't want the factorial of, um, you know, i. I want the factorial of two i plus one. So let me create a variable fact term, okay? And so fact term, I'm gonna be two times i plus one, all right? The term I wanna calculate the factorial of, okay? And then um, I'm gonna create a variable fact um, calc, or maybe uh, fact accum, an accumulator variable, because in order to calculate this factorial, essentially it's just going to be a, a continuous product, okay? And so when I have continuous products, I'm gonna initialize my uh, accumulator variable at the value of one, right? Because anything times one is one. And so now where we just need to be careful with this is when I start with i equals zero, okay? I'm gonna need the factorial of one, all right? So essentially I'm gonna loop from one to one, all right? Which is, you know, MATLAB's essentially not gonna do anything, right? And that's perfectly fine um, because, you know, it's not gonna do anything my accumulator still has a value of one, right? Alternatively, by starting with one, I could start at the um, second index. I could start with i equals two um, because it'll be factorial of one, which is just one um, times uh, whatever that uh, next uh, additional term is. Okay, but let me just keep it as basic as possible. So I'm gonna start for uh, j equals one to uh, fact term. Okay, fact term is um, you know, what I want to calculate the factorial of. So I'll start it with one, uh, even though using one as my lower bound, I'm not actually going to do anything the first iteration. Uh, it's okay. And then the other thing to note is when I set up this for loop that's nested in this outer for loop, I use a different loop index variable. Okay. And so in order to calculate factorial, all right, it's going to be fact accum is equal to fact Cum ah, times j. Okay, so it's going to be the current value of my accumulator variable uh, times j, where j is essentially my loop index, which is going from one uh, all the way up to the number I want to calculate the factorial of. All right, so it'll be one times two times three times four times five, all the way up to whatever that number is I want to calculate the factorial of. Okay. Um, by keeping j equals one here, um, when i starts at zero, fact term is just going to be one. So I'm going to have, you know, j is you know one colon one, uh, which is nothing. So it's not actually going to do anything in this for loop. So I could just as well take this lower bound and make it two, um, but it really doesn't make a lick of a difference. Okay. So I'm going to say compute the factorial of two times i plus one. Okay. Then once I have the factorial, um, I can go ahead and perform my calculation. So it'll be um, negative one raised to the i power okay, times x. Okay, x is a precondition, so it's what I'm trying to compute the angle of. X raised to the two times i plus one, which I've stored to this variable fact term. divided by uh, 2i plus 1 factorial, which is just fact q. Okay. So this is going to be, say, a Taylor term. Okay, so this is you know this term for a given value of i. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to add that term to my accumulator. Right. So Taylor sum is equal to Taylor sum plus Taylor term. Okay. Cool.
Okay, and so you know that's all it would take in terms of calculating um, you know sine of x using Taylor series expansion. Okay, um, but we want to look for uh, convergence. Okay, so um, to do that, let's do this. Okay, so for, let's go back up here. I'm going to compute my reference value. So um, computing reference value using MATLAB built-in function. Okay, so that would be we said we would call it sin ref is just equal to sine of x. Okay, cool. And so what I'm going to do now before I begin my for loop is let's start and um, we're going to have a hold on command which we'll open up my figure window um, and then by hold on as I plot uh, additional data points it's not going to erase uh, what's currently up there. Okay, And we can even go ahead and we can you know label it here or later. So my x label will be you know n number of terms in my expansion y label <clears throat> so what I'm going to plot is I'm going to plot um, sine x um, Taylor minus sine x ref okay this way when it comes to looking for convergence, I'm essentially, in my case, just going to look to see when um, this difference um, is approximately equal to zero. Okay. And so then each iteration, I'm going to plot i, which is n, right, number of terms, okay, number of terms included in this um, sum, right. Um, Right, so we're going to include that zeroth term times, or um, that'd be my x variable, then Taylor sum, and let's plot as say uh, a black circle. Okay, bam. I'm going to save it. Okay, I'm going to save this as tail. I'll call it Taylor converge. Bam. Okay, and we're saved. So, oh, that's not what I want to do. Let me minimize it. Let me open up this guy again. Okay. So then I'll run it. Okay. We said that we're going to have preconditions, and our preconditions will be x the angle. Um, so we said let's start with pi. The number of terms, uh, let's say n is 20. Okay. So now if I run Taylor converge, you know, what do I get? Okay. Well, I get an error. I get an undefined uh, function or variable fact a q, right, in line 28. Okay, this is fact a q. Okay, so let me fix that. Save and try again. Okay, so doing right, it appears to work. Bam. Um, so this is again my estimate for my Tyler series expansion relative to my reference value. So initially. You know, difference is you know above three, then it's say negative two, right? But then quickly we uh, approach this value of, of zero, right? Cool. <coughs> and if I want to, I could you know change the uh, y limit, okay? And say I just want to look between say zero point five and zero point five, okay? Say I just want to zoom in from negative zero point five to positive zero point five, I can do that, okay? And I'll zoom in, all right, and I see I'm very quickly getting close to zero. Okay, if I want to zoom in even more, okay, let's say plus or minus 0.1, all right, and so you know already by say five terms, right, I'm essentially already converged um, or have reached a value of zero. Okay, the nice thing about a script is that's for when x is pi. What about when x is pi over six? Okay, so if I rerun for that case. Right, things aren't looking quite the same, right? So I change x to be pi over 6, so sine ref is pi over 6. Yeah, so then have x in here. Okay, so what went wrong? Okay, this looks like it's the difference is converging on 0.5. Okay, 
Okay, so that doesn't look right. So let me clear my variables. Okay, let's do uh, pi over 6. We'll do n is uh, 20 again. If I plot it, you know, once again, all right, it's hovering around 0.5. All right, what gives? Let me make sure. Oh, what gives is uh, I am uh, a foolish person, right? Because what I'm plotting is still Taylor sum. All right, what I had meant to plot was say Taylor sum minus um, sine ref, right? It only worked out before um, it, because sine of pi is zero. <laughs> okay, so let me close that and see if I can get it working this time. Okay. Yeah. So now, once again, right, we very quickly um, approach zero. Okay. It looks like even more quickly than we did before. Right. By you know, time we hit that first term, it looks like we're essentially already at zero. Okay. Cool. All right. And so that's um, our Taylor series expansion problem.